Today's lesson is about the circumference and diameter ratio in a circle. So to understand this, first let's just review what the word circumference means. This should be familiar to you. The circumference is the distance around a circle. And it's a linear distance. So we're talking about units like centimeters, inches, which would be abbreviated IN. I'll just do the abbreviations here where needed. So millimeters, kilometers, etc. Uh, kilometers would be a unit that you probably wouldn't use for most circles. But it is a linear distance around the edge of a circle. And so first off, let's just understand where that calculation can be used and where it comes from. So in the demonstration here that we've sometimes done in class, it says to measure the circumference of a round object by wrapping a string around its perimeter, then measure the diameter of each object, record each measurement to the nearest millimeter. So what I've done is just made a little slide here, and I've gone ahead and done some calculations related to the circumference and diameter of each one of these circles. So I did a couple of optical illusions. This first one here, you're supposed to try to figure out where the exact center of the circle is. Is it the green dot or is it the red dot? But I've gone ahead and measured out the circumference and the diameter of this particular circle. So circumference distance around was 173 millimeters. The diameter was 55 millimeters. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the ratio of those two and divide them. So we're going to take 173 divided by 55 and our result is, in this case, 3.145455. I'll just bring out to all the decimal places that show on our calculator here. Oh, okay, so that number should look familiar to you. Let's try it out with this second little optical illusion with these concentric circles. So if you uh, move your head forwards and backwards in front of these circles, it's going to look like they're rotating a little bit. It's going to look like they're kind of spiraling. So maybe you can try that while I'm doing the calculation here. Just bob forward and backwards in front of these circles, staring at the center, and it'll look like they rotate. So I'm going to take the ratio between the two. So I'll take 195 divided by 62. And in that case, I get 3.145.161. Okay, again, that should look familiar to you. This is a little bit hard to read, maybe on your screen, but it's the circle of student life. So starting at midnight, on the top of the clock, midnight is go to bed. I think that's kind of funny. Midnight's go to bed. And then if you follow it around to the sleep, 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 and the various activities during the day, you might relate to maybe some of those stages of the circle of student life here. I think it's kind of funny. So anyway, if I took the circumference of this circle here and the diameter, I measured those out to be 358 millimeters and 114 millimeters and divide the two. So 358 divided by 114 and I get a ratio of 3.14. 0351. All right, so if we fill those in on our note sheet, let's go to the next page here. All right, so if you fill those in on our note sheet here, and I'm not going to rewrite them, but if you can maybe rewrite this as circle one, circle two, and circle three. I think what I will put is, you, know, you can write down the circumference and diameter of each, but it's really the ratio between the circumference and diameter that I am interested in here. So going back to that first one, let's see, I had a ratio of 3.145455. And in the second one, I've got a ratio of 3.145161. And 
And in the third one, I have a ratio of 3.140351. Okay, so these ratios, again, were found by taking the circumference and dividing by the diameter of each one of those circles. So if we calculate the average of those, we're going to see that the average is going to be about 3.14. If you want to add these three numbers up and divide by 3 to get the average, you're going to see that they average out to be about 3.14. So that should be familiar to you, that number 3.14, approximately 3.14, we know as the famous number pi, pi. And this year, I am recording this in the year of 2015, it is the once in a hundred year pi day because on March 14th, in the year 2015, 31415, that would be the first five digits of the number pi, 3.1415. And if you go and watch a clock at 926 in 53 seconds, then that would just be the ultimate. Take a picture next to a digital clock. It is on Saturday, March 14th this year. It's a once in a hundred year event for mathematicians and people who love to celebrate all that is pi. So, with that said, let's go ahead and write down our circumference conjecture here. So let's just think about where our pi came from. So pi, the number pi, is found by dividing circumference and diameter. Okay. So what if we were going to take c for circumference and d for the diameter of a circle, and then there's the number pi such that c equals circumference equals. So what if we got c by itself here? So let's just do a little bit of quick algebra. If I want to get C by itself, I'm going to undo that division of the diameter by multiplying both sides, cancel out the diameter. So now I have diameter times pi is equal to the circumference. Now, usually how we write that is pi times diameter or pi d. So circumference is found by multiplying pi by the diameter of a circle. Remember, a diameter is the same thing as two radii. So one diameter is two radii. So you could restate this formula with r as the variable instead of diameter as the variable in there. So if there are two radii, then you could say circumference is equal to pi times 2r. All right. And a lot of people will remember that formula as c equals 2 pi r. So you can reorder those three. They're all being multiplied together, pi times 2 times r. So you can put those in whatever order. So you might see the coefficient first when you see that formula. All right. So now that we have the formula for calculating the circumference, now we're going to go ahead and use that. Now, as we go through the entire rest of the year in these problems, I am going to be very picky about how we show our work here. I found that if I'm specific about how we show our work, that that can be very helpful for many of us in terms of getting the correct answers. I know some people can do some of these steps in their heads and do just fine with it, but I have noticed a lot of errors occur when we are doing these multiple step problems without being organized. So this is a way that we are going to organize our work. On every single problem, I would like you to first write down the formula that we use. All right, so we got circumference is equal to 5 pi here, find the diameter. So our formula that we're going to use is circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Write that down. Step number two, let's plug in the known values into the problem. Well, what do I know here? I know what the circumference is. It says that the circumference is five pi centimeters. So we are going to put five pi into the circumference spot. And so now five pi is equal to pi times diameter. Step number three is to solve for the unknown. So if I'm going to solve for the diameter, if I want to get diameter by itself, I want to undo this pi times diameter by undoing 
multiplication with the opposite, which would be to divide. So we're going to divide both sides by pi to undo the multiplication rule of divide. Pi divided by pi is 1, so basically cancels out on the right side. But same thing is true over here. Pi divided by pi is 1. So we are now going to show our answer over here. Step 4, show your answer with a label. Well, now I have 5 is equal to b. And what is the label for the diameter? It is a linear distance, so we are going to stick with centimeters. And I know in science, when I working with the science teachers, they like to include the units throughout the problem, and I think that is a very good idea. Since I'm just focusing on the math part of it here, we're, I'm just going to bypass that a little bit and use our brains at the end of the problem to put the correct unit in. So there is our first example, part A. Part B. Now, this one it says, if the radius is 4 centimeters, find the circumference. So if the radius is 4 centimeters, which formula would work best here? Thinking the formula that involves the radius would work out best. But if you want, you can still use pi times d. It's really up to you how you want to do it. All right? But I'm going to use the radius formula. All right? So circumference is equal to 2 times pi times radius. So I'm actually using this little version over here. All right, step number two. Let's plug in what we know. We know that the radius is 4. So the circumference is equal to 2 times pi times 4. All right. Step number three, solve for the unknown. All right, well, we actually have circumference already by itself over here. So basically, we're just going to do a little bit of simplifying, 2 times pi times 4. Now, what we usually will do in these problems is we'll multiply the whole number, so 2 times 4, the coefficients, and then we will leave the pi kind of over on the side here. So this is called leaving it in terms of pi. So we multiply all the whole numbers, and then this irrational number pi, we just kind of have sitting over on its own. So 8 times pi, and then our final answer here, we're going to write it down, would be circumference is equal to 8 pi centimeters. Now, if you really prefer to see what number that is, if you multiply 8 times pi together and round to the tenths place, that is about 25.1 centimeters. Now, 25.1 centimeters is an approximation. It's not exactly what the circumference is because I had to round to the tenths place, but that's why we sometimes like to leave it in terms of pi, because 8 times pi is technically the exact answer. 25.1 is the rounded approximation. So sometimes we'll be multiplying it through and getting an approximation so we actually know what number we're talking about here. Sometimes the 8 pi seems a little abstract, abstract for us. But sometimes I'll write down both of them. In fact, on these problems, I typically will write down both of them. All right, let's do part C here. Circumference is equal to 14 feet. Find the diameter. So we're talking about diameter again. So I am going to use the diameter version. So circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Let's plug in what we know. In this case, we know that the circumference is 14 feet. So we're going to put 14 into the circumference spot. So circumference is equal to pi times diameter. All right, step three. Let's solve for the unknown. So in this case, we are going to get diameter by itself. We'll undo the multiplication by dividing both sides by pi. And so in this problem, unlike problem number, well, part A, in this problem, the diameter ends up as 14 divided by pi. So the pi canceled out back in part A here but it doesn't really cancel out in number four, or part C, I should say, step four. And so we can leave our answer as 14 divided by pi feet. That would be leaving it in terms of pi. Or we can divide it out, and it's approximately 14, I'm sorry, 4.5, 4 and a half, 4 and 5 tenths feet. So this would be leaving it in terms of pi 
this would be the decimal approximation for it. Part D. All right, so once again, we have circumference is equal to, in this case, 8 inches. Find the radius this time. Okay, so we're back to a radius calculation. So I'm going to use the radius version here. So circumference is equal to 2 times pi times the radius. And step number two here, let's put in what we know. Let's plug in what we know. Circumference is 8 inches. So I'll put 8 in the circumference spot is equal to 2 times pi times the radius. All right. Step number three, solve for the unknown. So I'm going to go through and do a little bit of algebra again here. We're going to maybe take and undo the multiplying of 2 by dividing both sides by 2. And so that cancels it out here. And so now I have 4 is equal to pi times the radius. And then next, we have pi times r. So to undo the pi, we will divide both sides by pi to undo multiplication. So that cancels out. And now we have our final answer, which is going to be the radius is equal to 4 divided by pi. In this case, again, it's a linear unit. So we're using inches, so inches. And 4 divided by pi as a decimal approximation is about 1.3, 1 and 3 tenths inches. So the exact answer in terms of pi would be 4 divided by pi. The decimal approximation is about 1.3, 1 and 3 tenths. All right, final one down at the bottom here. Let's go back to All right, so I've got diameter is equal to 6.5 kilometers. Find the circumference. Okay, so... Once again, I'm given a diameter, so I'm going to go back to circumference is equal to pi times diameter. I am going to plug in what I know. So this time I'm giving the diameter, so I'm going to put that into the diameter spot. So 6.5 kilometers is going to go to the diameter spot. All right, step number three, there's not a whole lot of work to do on this one. I'm just going to basically combine steps three and steps four together here and just clean this up a little bit because there's no solving for the unknown. I already have circumference on its own on the left side of the equation. I'll just reorder this to be 6.5 pi, 6.5 pi. And our unit on this problem is kilometers. We multiply 6.5 times pi. That gives us about 20.4 kilometers, 20 and 4 tenths kilometers. So those are a few problems related to calculating circumference or working backwards to get a diameter or radius. I would like you to use those four steps in the problems that we are working with formulas.